All right, good morning, good morning. We are kicking this off. All right, so starting today, uh, moving forward on Thursday mornings from 9 to 9.30, the Perfecting Your Conversation is gonna have a different look and feel. Um, it's gonna be very focused on listings, overcoming objections, overcoming uh, what we call stalls, digging for motivation, really what, what you're gonna learn through each Thursday session, uh, specifically over the next 30, 60, 90 days, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't have an end date to it, is language skills, language patterns, uh, the psychology behind the words we use, very specific dialogue that you can put into any type of conversation, even though we're focusing on listings, you can put it into any type of conversation and have better success, okay? So each week is gonna be a different, um, what we call language pattern. There's actually a proven, like over 10 years of research, thousands of people proven, uh, perfect 12 minute conversation. So what I wanna go through right now is, um, First, I want to actually break down that 12 minute conversation in steps. Then we're going to start with the very first piece of it. And then next Thursday, we're going to move to the next piece. In between each week, what I'm going to challenge all of you with, because I love challenging people, what I'm going to challenge all, all of you with is in between each Thursday sessions, practice that item. Okay, so today, we're going to practice the first part of the conversation, which is our opener. How do we start it? How do we kick it off to get the better results? So each day, find 15 minutes every day. That's all you need, 15 minutes. You don't need an hour, you only need two hours. Find 15 minutes, and whether you practice by recording yourself and listening to it back, you practice with a fellow agent, you practice with a significant other, that's always fun. Did that with my husband years ago when I started in real estate. He's not in real estate, he's like, um, Again, 15 minutes each day between each session to start mastering these language patterns. I will promise you this, if you commit to that, if you commit to showing up, you commit to learning this, you commit to practicing it, within the next 60 to 90 days, if not sooner, you will double your appointments you set and they will be more quality. When I put this in place back in the day, um, when I was full-time agent, making the calls and smiling and dialing and all that uh, and connecting with people. I went from setting zero appointments to three a week. I went from saying three to eight a week. Eight appointments a week. Most people were like, I want one. So when I say this works, this works. But only if you put time for it. All right, before we get started, uh, for those on Zoom, for those in the room, any questions? No? Okay, I kick this off? Okay, cool. Um, we will also be creating on our YouTube channel, we will have a, um, uh, oh my goodness, what is it called? A list, a channel within a channel, a folder, a folder, I don't even know what it's called, uh, with all of these language patterns, all these recordings in one place. You can go back, you can re-listen to it, um, re-practice. So I'm gonna write something out for you guys. I'm gonna break down the 12 minutes. You guys ready for it? Yeah. All right, so either on Zoom or in the room, what does M stand for? What would be the number one most important thing to learn from a person on a phone call or in person? Motivation. Perfect. That's exactly what it stands for. So motivation takes anywhere between three to five minutes. Okay, Devin, you'll, you will learn what this sounds like throughout the next session. C is criteria. That's the logistical part of it. How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? What location? What price point? Um, that's the specifics about it. Okay. C is the logic. M is the emotional. People think on logic, they act on emotion. Okay. Logic is I need three bedrooms, two bathrooms with a yard for my dog uh, in this specific school district. And by the way, I want a big kitchen. I like the bathroom. Cool, that's criteria, that's logic. M is the emotion. 
I need three bedrooms because we have three kids, they're sharing rooms, they're cramped, I'm going insane, and I want to jump out a window. Okay, pay for it. A is ability. This is financial. Okay, so for a buyer, that would be how are they going to pay? Are they paying in cash? Are they, do they need a loan? Have they talked to a lender yet? Do they need to talk to a lender yet? By the way, you cannot talk to somebody, let me rephrase that, you should not talk to somebody about money until you tap into motivation. Because you haven't earned the right to talk about money yet. Not earned the trust, you haven't built a relationship. Who are you? Why are you talking to these people about money? And you don't even know who they are. And they don't know you. Okay, time frame. Great. Hey, when do you want to be in that new house with three bedrooms as opposed to two to get your sanity back? Not when you want to move. Nobody wants to move. It's exhausting. You get to pack boxes, you pay all this money for movers, or you do it yourself, and you have to like find friends and bribe them with pizza and beer to help you move, right? Nobody wants to, nobody likes the act of moving. So instead, you tie time frame to their motivation. Right. Hey, thank you so much for sharing that. When do you want to be in that better school district for your kids' lives? When do you want to have that bigger kitchen in the backyard so you can like let the dogs out and you don't have to, you know, put them in the car and drive places every day? When do you want that shooter, shorter commute to work? Right. So when do you want fill in the blank with motivation? Time frame is very specific. A person's going to give you something. They're going to say, well. I'm thinking maybe June, or I'm thinking September, I'm thinking January 2023, or maybe in the fall, maybe in the spring. We're looking to get something specific. If someone says next year, my comment back to them is gonna be a great. So you think of January, that's awesome. They're like, well, no, I was, you know, yes or no, I was thinking more later January. And then why, why are they saying that time? Why does somebody say a time? We'll get into that in a little more detail. So if you look at this, if you're on a call with someone and you ask them a few questions to learn about them, it's like three to five minutes. That's all it takes. You do not need 30 minutes to talk to somebody. That is a, that, that is a waste of 30 minutes. You do not need 30 minutes to dig into someone's criteria. That's a checklist. It is a, a sheet. I have examples of my office. It is literally you're filling in a sheet of what they're looking for. Three to five minutes, max. Financial ability, you're not giving them all the answers. You're not the lender. You're not the financial person. You're simply saying, hey, how are you planning to finance your new home? Will you need financing? Will you need a, um, a loan? Most people say yes. Great, we'll talk about that. I'll share what that looks like to you. When are you looking to be in that new place, Bob? And that time frame actually takes about 30 seconds, not one minute. So as you can see, we broke down a conversation in max 12 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna pause here for a minute. What questions do you have on this? From what are your thoughts on this? I call it the MCAT. You'll hear other things. So throughout Hello Williams, there's a lot of acronyms. It's literally a glossary book of acronyms. It's like a book. And one of the things that I learned years ago was another method called LP Mama, where each letter stood for something. Location, price, motivation. So each letter stood for um, something you need in a conversation. I do have the breakdown of that in more detail if you want it. I shortened it because, you know, as I get older, my attention span and my like memory goes. So I'm like, okay, I just need something smaller. MCAT, motivation, criteria, ability, time frame. I have everything from you I need to move you to the next step. Wait, how do you feel about this? Great. Makes sense. Shortens it down, right? Yeah. Just gives you a little cheat sheet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing. If you have, let's say you get a buyer on the phone right now. Okay, here's what a lot of us agents do. I was this agent back in the day. So we get so excited. We get someone on the phone and they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm really interested in uh, 
um, you know, one, two, three, Cookie Street. You know, I want to go see it. Oh my God, awesome. Um, well, let me take a look. Let me make sure it's still available. Uh, have you talked to a lender yet? Let me get you in touch with a lender. Let me schedule a show. Yeah, you just got on the phone with that person in about like two minutes. You know nothing about them. Why would they work with you? Why, how are you setting yourself apart from another agent? So we get over excited and we move people so fast through a phone call to get them off the phone call thinking, oh my God, I just set this amazing appointment. No, you set a show that they may or may not show up for and they may or may not answer the phone for the lender. They don't know what that means. They don't know who you are. They haven't probably even said their motivation out loud. So instead, it sounds something like this. You mind? Can we roll play? Sure. Okay, so if you, you get the easy part, you get to be the buyer. Okay. okay. Great. But next Thursday, you're not going to be the agent. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Corey, um, what I want you to do is just throw out the. Uh, actually, I'm just going to uh, tell you I'm calling you and you're just going to leave the email. Okay, great. All right. Hello. Hey, this is Corey. Yeah, uh, yes, it is. Hey, Corey, this is Alana. I am a local real estate agent in your area with Kellowin's Legacy. Thank you so much for taking my call. Um, I see that you were looking at some homes online. That's really exciting. What has you thinking about making a move? Don't answer that yet. Hold on. So that's your opening. Notice how I didn't say, how are you? What did I say instead? You meant just uh, mentioned my interest in uh, the market. Asked me what was our motivation, pretty much. Yeah, and right before that, I thanked you. Thanks. Yeah, for right. my time. So instead of how are you today? So what happens is when we sit now, here's the thing if we've already had a conversation and I'm calling you back, I'm following up with you, then yes, I'm going to ask you how are you today because that's a nice thing to ask. And I actually do care. How you're doing, but you're a stranger. We haven't talked. You don't know me. I don't know you. So it's not that I don't care how you are, but if I ask that, I'm now giving control of the conversation to you. And now you have all the power. I don't want you to have the power yet. I don't want you to have the control yet until I ask for a very specific motivation question. Right? We need to stay in control of the conversation every step of the way. And the best way to do that is through the proper questions to ask. Also, when you thank someone, it's actually a psych psychological thing where they're like, oh, yes. like in their brain, they're like, it sends a trigger that says, well, that was nice. They just like to be thanked. The other part of that opener, right? By the way, your opener should be no more than 15 seconds. This is crucial. If your opener is more than 15 seconds, you're going to lose them. They're more likely going to say, well, I'm just browsing, I'm just looking, or I can't talk now, or you know what, coming back later, you're, you're, people don't have patience. You have 15 seconds to get the talking, max. So after the thank you, I referenced the source. The source was, I saw you just looking online. Now that could be anything. You could be a Zillow lead, a Facebook ad, a lead that came in, you could be something that came through my website. Let's say that you are um, maybe a potential seller. You have to be in a neighborhood. I was calling around a neighborhood. That referencing the source might sound something like this. Hey, Mary, well, listen, thank you so much for taking my call. I'm actually calling um, around your entire neighborhood. So now I'm referencing what I'm doing. How do you feel like <laughs> Because we have a number of buyers who are looking and not enough homes in the market. And then we can go into, are they interested in selling? Okay, so we have to start the conversation with the purpose of the call, and then ask them a question. You notice the question I asked you was open-ended. What else do you think about making a move? Can you answer that with one word, or yes or no? No. See, that was a close-ended question. <laughs> As opposed to what I hear a lot of, it's very, it's very normal, and this is what you want to get away from. Hey, are you thinking about buying? Are you thinking about buying a house? 
Are you still interested in buying? Are you still interested in selling? Yes, no. We shut ourselves down. We back ourselves in the corner. If you start the conversation with an open question where they cannot answer or throw a word, you're more likely to strike up a positive conversation that will lead into either something, you know, a, 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 an appointment or a strong nurture, um, okay. I'll let you go. Thank you. something that's going to, from again, get them talking. Yeah. That's the whole purpose. You need to get them talking. So, thank you so much for taking my call. I see that you were looking for ones online. That's really exciting. What has you thinking about making a move? Oh, I'm just, uh, you know, kind of uh, tired of renting right now and just looking to uh, settle down and build some equity. Oh, well, I appreciate you sharing that. So when you say renting, how long have you rented for? So how long uh, have you been a renter? About uh, recently, you know, five years. I uh, haven't uh, never owned a home. So. Okay. so building equity is important. What else about buying your own home is important to you? Uh, just, you know, I, I'd like to have something that's my own, uh, you know, eventually uh, start a family, which would be nice, and uh, you know, just have more space. It's, it's all kind of important to me. Okay, so something of your own, build that equity, stop paying someone else's mortgage exactly. that you're doing right now. Yeah. yeah. I was, did that for nine years. Um, but I also heard more space. Sure. Okay. By the way, I'm asking these questions so I can better help you when you're ready to buy. Um, we can narrow down things out there and, and really provide you with what you're looking for. So when you say more space, what does that look like? Definitely a yard. Uh, have some dogs right now. Uh, sick of uh, going up and down the stairs or elevator to let them out. Uh, dogs are just be able to turn back the door and just have run right out. Uh, fenced yard, pretty much uh, something something decent size. Uh, you know, uh, just a couple extra bedrooms. I, I work a lot uh, from home too, so I'd like to have place I could turn into a home office. Um, I love to cook, so kitchen, bigger kitchen, and things like that, just off the top of my head. That's what I'm thinking. Love that. Love that. Okay, so I heard sick and tired of going up and down the stairs with the dogs. Okay. How many dogs? Two right now. Oh my god, cute. Um, by the way, side note, I would probably tap into like me personally, I'm an animal lover, so I'd probably spend some time, like what kind of dog and all that. If you have a connection, make the connection. If you don't like dogs, don't bring up a connection about dogs because that would be lying. Don't do that. Right? Always stay genuine. Um, so I'm going to pause here a minute. There was a pain point, right? There's So there's, well, we got some criteria, right? Criteria being bigger kitchen, a yard. Um, more, you know, uh, better, an extra better for an office space. There was emotion behind that. What was some of the emotion? Are you sure? Hopes and dreams, kind of like, uh, like pain points. Like, so you mentioned space. Space. Right. So space, space is a, is a pain point, right? It means you don't have it now. You need it for a reason. You're either feeling cramped where you're working, or maybe you're not, you know, you need something dedicated if you're sick and tired of working off of your couch. Or like you mentioned, you're tired of going up and down the stairs with the dogs. You want a yard to feel like, go ahead, run free, right? Yeah. So that's a pain point. So that's when we talk about pain points, when we talk about motivation and emotion, that those are examples of what I mean by that. Nobody just wakes up in the morning and goes, well, I think I'll move today just because, right? Usually what happens is they first think about it. Then they usually talk about it with friends, family, significant other. Hey, we should move. I'm thinking of moving. I'm thinking of buying a house. So it becomes like a conversation with friends or family with them. Then they usually start playing online, and that's when they now get in touch with a, now an agent comes in. Right. So there's this whole thought process. It could be a month. It could be a year. This person's been thinking about it when we finally get them. So when we finally get that, that person connecting with us, they've given a lot of thought to us if they're motivated. 
people don't just move for the sake of moving. They move for a reason. Either a closer commute because they're sick and tired of their drive, or it's tired of stairs and build, wanting to build equity, tired of renting, tired of paying someone else's mortgage. Having two bedrooms and needing three for a reason. Are they growing a family? Are they having kids? Are they needing office space? What is that third bedroom for? Why do they want a bigger kitchen? Have they never been able to host Thanksgiving and they want to host Thanksgiving for the family? That's an emotional tie to why they want a bigger kitchen. Um, so one of my stories, a lot of people hear me share some similar stories over and over because they were very powerful to me when I started as an agent. So I'm going to share this example and this is where we're going to kind of end off. There was a couple, they were listing their house. Older couple, we just heard the story like 20,000 times. Older couple. Um, and their house was on the market with another agent when expired. It was overpriced, never sold. Went on the market another, uh, with another agent when expired, never sold. They tried to sell this house for almost two years. I got a hold of this expired listing and set the listing appointment. And I go out to meet this couple. First of all, I do a, you know, do a CMA. I'm like, well, okay. Those two agents, they have maybe three agents, they had listed in the past, overpriced the property. So I can't go into that conversation talking about price because I'm going to lose, right? And I'm not taking an overpriced property because that's just a waste of time. I had to go in there with emotion. I had to go in and tap into why in the world are they moving? So I'm sitting down with this nicest older couple ever. And I'm like, well, tell me a little bit about, like, thank you for touring me around your house. Tell me a little bit more about, you know, I know on the phone you mentioned you want to get to North Carolina, your family's there, your kids are there, your grandkids are there. But talk to me more about, like, why do you want to be there? Why do you want to be closer? Now, that conversation at their dining room table was about 15 minutes long. And yes, it did lead into bringing out some tissues for them. Is they start crying for them. That doesn't always happen. I just took it to that point. What they shared was we don't have the money to travel back and forth, and they don't have the money to travel back and forth with all of the grandkids. So they're missing recitals, missing birthdays, missing either Thanksgiving or Christmas. They get to choose one thing per year to visit them. That's powerful, right? They want to move closer so they don't miss their grandkids college growing up. They want to be a part of their lives for like five, ten years. And they don't want to have the grandkids not know them. That's powerful. I mean, that's not like I just want to move to North Carolina. So we sat there and talked through this. And when we got to the price point, I said, Well, what price do you have in mind for your home? And of course, they said a price about 50,000 over what it should be. I said, listen, your house has been in the market. I'm gonna be honest, your house has been in the market for some time with other agents. I'm not gonna sit here and talk to you about price. I'm gonna sit here and talk to you about getting you to North Carolina. So the market dictates how we get you to North Carolina. I don't, you don't. This is what the market is saying, which is 50,000 less than what they wanted. Said, if we put out a mark for this price, we're getting you to North Carolina before we, I started, I mean, I dug into like grandkids' names. I started naming them. I'm finding out their birthdays. Like we're going deep. I'm like, because I knew two years of other ages not being able to, this is where it had to go. I had to stay there. So I said, if we get your market up, if we get your house in the market now in the next few weeks with this price, I'm confident we can get you to North Carolina before the now for the kids name six years ago. Um, Chloe, thank you. Before Chloe's sixth birthday. And that's also now that's September, this is summertime. I said also you'll be there for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, you'll be there for the rest of the holidays. The school play, the recitals, everything. You're not going to miss a thing the rest of this year when they start school. Are you ready to get closer to your grandkids in North Carolina? Not are you ready to list your house? Not are you ready to sell? 
Are you ready to be close to your grandkids when they're growing up? Is there a difference? Same thing works for buyers, right? The conversation is completely interchangeable. Obviously, they were like, yes, they chose that price. Now, long story, longer story shorter. Um, then we got into the whole commission conversation. I ended up not taking it anyways because I refused to go that long in commission. So that's a whole other ballgame. Uh, that's a whole other class in another time. But you notice how it wasn't about this person moving. What was it about? Motivation. Motivation. You hear that emotion? Okay, so when we talk about pain points, emotion, motivation, they all mean the same thing, by the way. Pain points, emotion, motivation, they mean the same thing. So when you connect with somebody, here's your, here's your assignment for the next seven days, between now and next Thursday. One, I want you to practice your opener. Your opener's who you are, your name, right? Name, birth or name or team name if you're on a team. Thank them for taking the call if it's a phone call, right? If you're a person, thank them for having a conversation with you. Reference the source. Where did you get them? Was it referred by a friend? Did you see them looking online at homes? Were you just calling around a neighborhood? What is your purpose of that call? And then ask them an open-ended question. What has you think about making a move is my personal favorite because it's easy and interchangeable for buyers and sellers. So they don't have to overthink it. Any question where they can't answer with one word is a good question to start with to get them talking. So your assignment is to create your opener, practice it and time yourself, making sure it's 15 seconds or less, and practice tapping into a person's motivation. By the way, this is really fun if you have any friends, family, or significant other that you are surrounded with. If you sit around and you say to um, a friend of yours, hey, What's going on in your life? How's your week been? And they're like, well, you know, it's been busy, crazy at work. Oh, like, what's been crazy about it? Tell me more about that. Or if you have kids, and they're like, well, how was school? Fun life. Oh, like, what made it fun? What was your favorite thing about today? The greatest way to practice sticking to motivation is actually not about real estate. It's about your friends, your family, your kids, those people. All right, questions on the assignment? Helpful? Yes. Cool. One thing you got out of this, Corey. Just uh, the relation between motivation and emotion with using it to guide them into find yourself pretty much because connecting that and reaching them on a deeper level and digging deeper. Yeah. By the way, it's going to set you apart because they're going to really see that you care. You're not just this agent trying to be like, hey, let's go look at a house. Right? It's like, no, I actually want to become your client. I want to get to know you. Yeah. Okay, next week we're going to be tapping into objections. Right? So we're going to, you're going to learn four magical steps on how to overcome objections. Again, Throughout the course of the next 30, 60, 90, I don't have an end time frame to this. Every Thursday from 9 to 9 30, you're going to perfect your language skills to have better conversations. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next week. Thank you. Mm -hmm.